So the enemy does the same thing. But you think that being angry at your sister-in-law is okay. And you think being anxious about everything is your personality. Ah, come on, come and you on. think that when you accuse somebody of doing something wrong, that you're really helping them out, and you're just an accuser uh-huh. of the brethren. Come on. Okay? Jeez. I have a list of 90 come on. Okay, weapons of the enemy mm. that are harbored inside of us. Mm. That if any one of them is still viable, if any one of them has a heartbeat, if any one of them has a pulse, and you come up to the man of God, the woman of God, and you ask them to commune with you in a word that would heal your body if you're harboring one little speck Mm. of the enemy, it's done. You're not going to get it. Come on. Jesus. You can't bring an unholy vessel into a holy ground. Come on. When Jesus was in the garden and he was on his knees praying before his father to please pass this cup, he wasn't talking about the nine inch spikes that are going to go in his arm. He was talking about that the Holy One who was the high priest of all humanity that was set forth that everything that was made that was made through him mm-hmm. was going to have to bear every one of your sins. Yeah. Every one of your sins. Every sin in all humanity, past, present, and future. Yeah. Come, on. Yeah. Come on. Jesus made it known that is there another way for your children to be reunited? Yeah. And the Father said, no, you have to because you are the unblemished lamb. I need an unblemished man, lamb to be the advocate mm. of these And what happened was, when Jesus bore the sins of humanity, he turned to his father and said, Father, why have you forsaken me? Because Jesus now became sin for all of us. And the father could not, okay, look upon me in the presence of him until sin was destroyed with his so if you're expecting God to move in a miraculous way okay when we pray at the end of the year I'm going to start reading these off and if any one of these things resonate in you okay you need to rebuke it repent of it Clear it out and make no room for it to come back. Amen. And then you need to replace it with a powerful aspect, characteristic, emotion of our Holy Father. Because that when that fills in that place, when joy fills in instead of anger, and you rejoice in your joy on a daily basis and rebuke the desire of To be angry, okay? It says, rebuke the enemy and he shall flee. This is all connected. That's why the word is a powerful thing because it is a lie. It is completely a lie. And it's trying to be alive in your life right now. Do we get it? The conclusion is this. In order to build our faith, we first need to be obedient to his word. In order to get our faith in that position, we need to do house cleaning and see where in us we need to be resolved. Then we need to seek out, it's our responsibility to seek out the elder in the church, the person who's been through that which you've been through and been through successfully. And then what you need to do is pray that prayer of faith, which is basically what we're going to do. We're going to go through, I don't care if you've been saved 65 years. Mm -hmm. 
If you're harboring one aspect of the enemy, mm. not that it's going to destroy your salvation, but it's going to destroy your ability to believe that God can do everything. Amen. Come on. Thank you. He, it, what's impossible with man is possible with God. And I believe that we're here at this moment in time, okay, in this place right now, to expose, okay, how God could work in the miraculous when we just move our trash out of the way, okay, to allow him just to pour out his power upon it. You see, what happens is, the alternative is, we'd be like the guy at the pool of that's waiting for the angel to come stir, and then maybe for some reason, if you get kicked in the pool before somebody else, you're healed. <laughs> But harboring the enemy, any negative emotion, any mindset, any feeling, anything like that, okay, is going to harbor your, I mean, it's going to hinder your ability to work in powerful faith. Now, I need a little soft, <coughs> preparatory worship. Because we're going to do a reflection. And the reflection, I'm going to read through this for those who want to enter into his presence whole. That's good. To enter into his presence whole. And be in that position for God to just do what he does. Because he would not have gone through this extent in the scriptures. To be so specific on what to do and how to do it, if it wasn't so. I didn't make any of this up. The Lord gave me this this scripture this morning. He said, I'm going to give you the whole word when you get there. Mm. And now the whole word is out. Hey, come on. And now we got to get there. Amen? Amen? Back at 6 in the morning, 6.45 in the morning, the Lord awoke me, or woke me up from my slumber with um, past and Dolores on my mind. It's a fact. Wow, wow. And they said, this is what you need to do <clears throat> for the man of God and his wife who ladies, the woman of God. Because this house, you may not realize it now, but this house has already been set up, okay? It's already been set up. This house doesn't look like that street. This house has already been set up for kingdom activity. Come on. With or without you. Uh -huh. It's already been set up, okay, to go three times this amount, okay? in two and three services. It's already been set up for that. It's royalty is already here. And your pastor, through experiential learning, was stirred in his spirit to say, Doc, I need to have you as soon as possible. I want the first place you're going to go to be in my house for my people because I know what you're talking about. I'm not sure of our age difference. Three years? Okay. Regardless, okay, I've been through something that he's been through in this restoration process. And this eldership of understanding resonated before we even understood the concept. Amen. And he said, Doc, I need you here. Now, over the past two days, we spoke about covenant. And yesterday, I gave people an opportunity, and a great opportunity, to come to my office, correct? Amen. With a very, very attractive, affordable way of doing it, to come in for a consultation. And pastor and his wife are going to come in 
and 15 other people in, in this congregation are going to come in and trust me to show them the steps to avoid the work of the enemy and have a testimony of victory over any type of sickness. But the challenge is this, is that since the man of God was obedient, the Lord said he needs to be blessed. He is all over the posterity and prosperity and the well-being of this congregation at a fault, at a, at a means of sacrificing his own well-being. But this is our opportunity to bless him. See, he won't let me treat him for free. Nothing sowed, nothing reaped. But what I'm expecting today, and at 6.45, the Lord told me this, and if anybody's ever heard me speak before, and Alice has been with me hundreds of times, at hundreds of churches, I have never, ever taken up an offer. On my job. But today, when we come up for prayer, I need a basket. Okay? I need a basket. Because what I want is for the sheep of the shepherd, okay, to now pour back into, okay, the shepherd. I want him, and I'm not sure if I'm embarrassing you or not, but this is what the Lord said to me. That when he comes in, for me to evaluate him and his wife. What I want to say is that X amount of dollars of your care is already paid for by the people that you sold into. And now they're going to get their best offering. I'm not talking about your church offering. I'm talking about if you have $20 in your pocket, you have two tens, okay? And you put 10 in the church basket, and you want that other 10 to go get yourself some bread and milk on the way home? Forget about it. You will survive. You need to walk out of here with nothing in your pocket. If you need the bread and the milk, I'll buy it for you. But you need to sew back in. So when the man of God and his wife comes in to see me, I'm going to tell him that it's all been taken care of because you have sewed into your heart. Amen? I'm challenging you. Now, how many people here are ready to start increasing their faith? Want to increase your faith? This is what we're going to do. I'm going to open up the altar. Okay? And what we do, we're going to come into this box here. And um, somebody's going to grab the camera and bring the camera on this side here so we can video across. But we're all going to come in the box here. Okay? And I'm going to walk in the midst. And I'm going to walk in the midst and I'm going to tell you about what the enemy has put in you. And if it rings a bell, you need to repent of that. Okay? And there will be things. And then, before we finish, I'm going to tell you what God is going to put in its place. So, no, so, so it's swept out. Okay? And the enemy has no chance to come back in. So again, when I open up the altar for prayer... I want you to put your offering in to support the work that I'm going to do for your pastor in here. And then we're just going to gather around. And then I'm going to start reading through these 90, 90 infiltrations of the enemy. And we're going to take every single one of them and break them down. We're going to take every one of them and destroy it. We're going to take every one of them, okay, and bring it to an end. Amen? Don't be distracted. Amen? Okay. So I'm going to pray and open it up.